Welcome everybody. First day on the ninth. Thank you. Michael and I are so happy to have you with us. First day is, is so exciting. I live for, for this. Like being on set is is the my dream. I always love being on set. So I was just excited. Morning, how are you doing? I think the, the first time having all the cast together in one room was, was a lot of fun. It was also kind of stressful because up until then we'd just been shooting smaller scenes. You know, nine people, you have to cover that a certain way, so you have to make sure to, to get lots of coverage with the cameras. At times the, they could riff a little, um, so I had to be ready for that. It's like a ballet, you know, with the cameras. So first we shot with wides and then, and then we shot coverage of the, of the scene. Yes, sir. You good, ben? Okay. Yeah, I'm good, man. Thank right, you. <laughs> uh, very excited. Uh, very funny show. Um, loved all the scripts. Um, great to be here with a great cast, great crew. Uh, there's a really fun flavor here right now, and everybody feels very playful. Uh, so I'm, I think we're gonna have a good time. So the first scene we shot on day one was in the mop closet in the Berg's office, but transformed into No Name's office because he's taken over as manager. You wanted to uh, see me? Yeah. Um, oh, it's pretty boss, right? We also hadn't fully designed what his office would look like yet, so Mike and I were in there like moving things around, and um, that's some that's a that's a crew member's bra that's hanging off the mannequin. It was well, I was like, Maddie, do you have a bra we can throw on the mannequin? Think she's a costume and wardrobe. She would have a bra, and she was like, sure. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. But that was really fun. I think that scene started off well because um, Ben and Neil are both great, but it also set the tone for how we were gonna work, which is like, we're gonna move quickly, you're gonna have time to work, but we're also not gonna be, we weren't precious. We weren't like, you don't get 50 tries at the scene, we don't have the time, but also just like, it's not that type of show. It's like, you guys know these characters, you get what's going on, go in and do it. And, and you know, I don't think ever did the scene start off and we're like, no, 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 no. It's this way, not this way. It's like they got the, they knew which way they were pointing. And for that moment, I was just sort of like adjusting here and there. And they never knew, had to 180 anybody. No, characters knew, or the actors knew their characters really well, and they knew the scripts really well. They started off on the right foot. They started in a great direction. And it was just like, okay, maybe change this a little, try this. Um, and and we got it. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel today? Uh, Good diva. <laughs> Just a nice little office. That's the way to do it. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> Neil and I did the first uh, first scene, first shot of the day, so it's fun to sort of smash that champagne bottle on the bow of this ship. You know, here we are on an adventure. I'm really stoked. You know, we got a lot of ground to cover, but I think we're we're all in the right spirit. Hey, boss. Uh, the, the kid was a little nervous, but I, I managed to you know, settle him down. Tell me everything I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work, guys. Oh my goodness. Guys, being an actor is hard work. <laughs> what was that? Yes, you sound sweet. I think at lunch, like we were 10 minutes behind, which on a first day for a show is remarkable. So that's it, everybody was clicking. I think having done the trailer with essentially the same team yeah. uh, from cast and from a crew side meant that we already had a, a, a jive, we already had like a feeling with one another. But yeah, you're also worried like, yeah, is it is it gonna be funny? Are the, are the jokes gonna be funny? Are they gonna perform well? Yeah, I didn't worry about that. I wasn't worried about whether the show was funny because I don't think it's funny anyway. No, <laughs> I just did, that didn't worry me. I just worried, I worried that the production was gonna go off the rails. That someone's gonna be like, no, we don't have this. We don't have the cable that makes, that makes the camera go into the camera box. And that the whole thing was gonna be, we were gonna just start bleeding money. On a, on a production, like every minute costs a lot of money. The prep time, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> Uh, Michael and I meeting ahead of time, going over things, thinking of worst case scenarios is a lot cheaper than being on set when the worst case scenario happens and yeah. you have no idea what to do. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time doing that together as well as with the keys and so nobody was going in blind. It's like war. It's like you prepare for war knowing that it won't go the way it will and you have to have all these scenarios. You know? <laughs> It 
It's going great. It's going really well. The fr first morning, got everything 10 minutes behind. First day on a show, 10 minutes behind. I'll take that any day, every day. Yeah, yeah. The actors are incredible. Our crew's amazing. I'm just not super excited because I'm really up when we're shooting, and then lunch is when I like, I fall asleep. And I become a, a bumbling idiot, and then back on set, I make sense again. So cut around that. <laughs> We only had one fight, which I think was really mm. good. We had yeah, a quick true. early morning blow yeah. up, and then we yeah. got over it really quick. We're yeah, back. better to do it at the top yeah. of the day. Yeah, we want we were gonna have one fight a day, so we figured it's like top of the day is a good mm. time to do it, and we can get out, yeah. get in and get. But no, it's it's doing great. Yeah. The yeah. one thing I would want to change is the behind the scenes guy keeps coming into the shots too much, and it's yeah. like we're trying to get a fucking movie here, like let's yeah, go. Yeah. But it's fine. Other than that, it's perfect. The behind the scenes crew. Is yeah, they're always asking yeah. questions and moving around. I think but. also you should let, uh, we should, have we given a nod to our sponsors yet? I mean, it's really great that we have got sponsored by uh, Jarrett Funeral Homes, Dignity yeah. Memorial, <laughs> Funerals yeah. and Cremations. It's a good, yeah. make sure you get a, a pop off of that sign because right. yes. they're just, and they've gold been really bond good. medicated powder. Gold bond medicated powder. <laughs> Stop, smell itch. Yeah. Here's a question. Here's a question for yeah. behind the scenes. Um, uh, chafing in the area, yeah. use gold bond or use Vaseline? I, I don't use either, but I would definitely use Gold Bond. See, he says no, but if, 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 you, if you're still doing the sports, you want to have some lubricant. Thing. Here's what you really need to do, is they make this underwear called Sax. Yeah. And there's like whole Sachs. scrotal. Brought to you by Sax. There's a new Sachs. sponsor, is Sax. Sachs. They're fantastic. You've got all, they've got extra like flaps that mm. give you that protection, so you don't yeah. need the Vaseline, you don't need the gold bond. I some say don't wear any underwear at all. Don't wear any underwear at all. It's just denim. Just, and I feel like denim. that's worse. Yeah. That's just a lot, a lot of raw worse. denim. Uh, right now we're shooting a one of many locker room scenes uh, in a very. Uh, tightly packed, well-lit locker room, so it's very hot down there, it's very muggy, which I think adds to the intensity of the scene. And me as, as a method actor, you know, I, I love it, I get right in there. And it, you know, I am, it's, that's what we're shooting, and it is hot and muggy down there, but it, you know, it's all, it's all fine, you know. All right, there, gang, can we, uh, can we So the, the first location we shot in was the locker room. It was a basement of a building that was under construction. We were able to work a deal where they would hold construction while we shot. So it already had, like, the right bones. It, mm. felt, it felt very, you know, rough and under construction. But there was a worry that there would be sounds or, or electrical issues that we wouldn't have anticipated because it, it wasn't yet a fully functioning place. Mm -hmm. What we didn't anticipate is it was gonna get incredibly hot down there. Uh, like, like swelteringly hot with all the lights and all the people. But the good news is the show took place in the summer and it was supposed to be hot down there. So all that sweat is genuine. It saved us having to go around and spritz people in the face. Everyone was just sweating their asses off. But like, they all liked it because the truth is like, I think it works for, it was supposed to be hot. Uh, the power went out all of a sudden. Um, and my first thought is, uh, oh, this is this is how the show dies. You know, like, th that's a bit of my personality. Like, if there's ever turbulence on an airplane that I'm on, I'm like, oh, I, this is how I die. It's an air crash, interesting. Well, and something with when you're shooting, shooting a show or anything for that matter, is like you, you get in a rhythm, you get a momentum going, and something like a power outage can, can stop that. It can literally just like kill whatever great momentum and energy you have going. Um, but with such a great cast and a good crew, we were able to like, okay, lights are back on, let's wind it up again, let's go. Um, so we really only lost the time the power was down, whereas I've been in situations before, seen other shows where you would lose that time, but then there'd be the reverberations of like an hour that it takes to get back to that level. Um, but that wasn't the case. Yeah, yeah. Crisis averted. First day went super well. Like we had a lot to shoot and we got through it but that was also one of our lighter days. Uh, so there was a chance of a lot more problems to come up. Yeah, and once we got over the blackout, I was thinking like, we're set. Like that was the curveball. God gave it all he could. He threw a plague at us, darkness, number nine. And I was like, that's it, we, that's it. The plague's over, we got through it, we're all good. But it turns out that there was actually several more plagues in the waiting. Yes. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> he always has us. She. Uh, 
Um, so we're just getting here. We're getting wardrobes ready for the first scenes that we're shooting. Trying to figure out who's wearing what, who's changing, who's not changing. It's a little confusing. So we just had our Britney Spears moment, but that's over now. We gotta work. Oh, come on. No, that's that over. No, you, you gotta catch me like, what's that word? Like, um, yeah, in the moment. I, I can't do it on camera. I'm not a good actress. Does your belt run backwards? This is how it was yesterday. It's your character, but you have to yeah. always do that now. Oh, that's I. This is the only way I wear. Really? Belt. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was a, you made a choice. Now I actually don't know. <laughs> I think going into day two felt really good. We had more to do, and it meant we only had two days left in the locker room. So that was a bit stressful, but yeah, I was excited and, and ready to go. Yeah, I was. I was jazzed. I was jazzed to see. Uh, we had some fun stuff on the slate. I'm just excited to see what the cast did with it. Well, this morbid <laughs> bitch just got into the fucking. School of Economics at Harvard motherfucking University. <laughs> Tap sisters on top. Okay, now let's all get us some winners some drinks because I want to get ripped. <laughs> Woo! Hey. And, then we, and then we just die into there. We shot this morning the first uh, couple scenes of the first episode. Our team has a big, amazing win. And I get to spot my uh, the apple of my eye, Chip, the new uh, team member from Texas. Jesse, I pride myself on judging people with little to no info, and that one's a choir boy. And choir boys are kind of my specialty. I'm sorry, Juice Box, but what we have there is a small town boy who's trying to break out of his shell, which is actually my specialty. Uh, day two is more uh, locker room stuff again, which is. Uh... Which is always a little, you know, claustrophobic because it's it's uh, so hot and, and muggy down there. I feel like everyone who's talking about the locker room is going to be saying the same thing. It's, it's so hot and muggy down there, but it is truly uh, tough. I think today was a lit, like just slightly tougher because uh, to, the day was actually so muggy too, and there was a little bit of uh, humidity in the air, so uh, it, it was uh, it was a little bit uh, extra. But our wonderful uh, crew here managed to wrangle up yep. uh, air conditioning. I don't know that the AC really helped that much because we could only turn it on for short periods of time. It ended up being a big thing. So we had to run this like big long thing down the stairs and then it would cool. It basically cooled like a four foot sphere and everything else was still very hot. But it was better than nothing. I'm glad we got it. Yeah, it was better than nothing, but it also it also slowed things down. Because you, so you add something that they have to move a giant tube around. So all of a sudden there's someone who has to be in charge of the tube and somebody in charge of turning it on and off. So it meant now those people couldn't do other things. They were in charge of the air conditioner. Yeah. It, it made things more comfortable, but also you run a bunch of lights and nine people and 10 crew in a small room, no air conditioner is gonna save you. Yeah, it's just hot. This is part of the thing, it's part of the deal. Also made us feel like, you guys, you guys are a little hot? Boom, we got an air conditioner. You know, anything you need. The bare minimum working conditions, boom, you got it. More like, you said like Lego. Okay. Yeah, we can do a Lego. Um, yeah. I'm nice and quiet, guys. Cause this ain't no, this ain't no beer league. You know Danny Muniz? You played a season for the Royals? 26 games. 26 games in the show. Uh, line? And you know where he started? In the show, and you know where he started? Right here, well not right here. I worked in the Gladstone Hotel for two years. We did karaoke Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Oh man. Here's my best friend's birthday. I used to be a host for karaoke. Oh my god. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You listen to the right same song. Uh, yeah. Uh, Paradise by the Dashboard <laughs> Light. Uh, Summer Lovin'. Uh, uh, like a Prayer. Uh, like a Prayer. These boots are made for walking. Yeah. That was, that was one that was. That was, wow. that was Actually, good. the time that I was doing it, uh, really. Really popular. I'm a bitch. I'm a lover. I'm a child. They used to sing that all the time. <laughs> so, welcome to my crib. Come on down. I'll show you around. So, if you ever got lost, you always know 
This way is the nine. So here we got the uh, private corridors. These are my uncles. Oh, hi there, you guys. Hey there. Hey. So this way, sort of my closet. It doesn't look like I got much clothes, but it's under everything, right? So got my beverages and everything. Parts. Over here, where the real party goes down. This is the pool room. You know, so we get a little swim action going on. Pretty nice, eh? Big shower, huge shower. <laughs> Showers are under construction right now, so you know what? I'm not gonna show you that quite yet. But yeah, this is where the magic happens. All right, let's bring eight cam over to the doorway on the sticks. No, I think I think roll, rolling. How's your how's your dexterity? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just and then yeah. 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 Just have some some on standby there. Yeah. But we'll and and then in the next scene she'll be smoking the one that she was rolling. But we'll use a, one of yours for that. This this is why I should be playing center field. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that's the general idea. All right, let's shoot it. All right, cool. I'll use my Shakespeare voice to make sure that I'm heard. Ah, <laughs> all right, let's go. So we're uh, we've got a couple hours left in the day. We've shot some big scenes. We shot one uh, episode one, the like first scene in the locker room, the second scene, third scene in the locker room. Those are big scenes, so we, we shot a lot of coverage for those, but it's a big moment. We get to meet everybody. It's our first time together. Uh, we just did a big standoffish scene between No Name and the Berg. That, that, that was like pretty tense. It was really hot down there, so it helped make everyone feel really tense and uncomfortable. Uh, and now we're about to go into a scene where the Berg loses his concentration. Uh, yeah, so a lot of like three, four, five, six big scenes already. A couple more to go. We've had, um, we've had a fun weather day. We had a blackout due to, well, yeah. that might have just been a fun power. We've got a tornado warning going on and all the signs in the area are like shaking like mad. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, that's true. We lost power midway through like yeah. a setup. And we only had one shot left to go in the scene and the power went. So it's like you get your momentum and then the power goes and you sit around for 10 minutes and lose it all. But, but we power through it. Yeah, yeah. No, we're good. Everybody's doing great. Cast, fantastic. How's the heat down there? It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. I'm not it's, it's like 30 degrees out here and it feels so comfortable. I could live in this. No, it's it's much cooler now, but it definitely is really yeah. hot. There's also some chafing going on, I think. I can speak for a lot of people. So what are your chafing solutions today? That's great. Um, I usually change, do a full wardrobe change somewhere uh, between like third and fourth scene of the day. So I shaved my testicles, so I thought that would be a nice smoother. But I shaved yesterday, so I'm getting some, some growth back, so it's not helping. I did bring shorts, but I didn't change into them. But just knowing I have them, I think it's helping. Mm -hmm. And Michael's also a swimmer, so he's like his legs well, are totally shaved as well. I don't swim professionally anymore. I don't swim professionally anymore. No, but no. you're a swimmer. Eh, I mean, I was. Phelps once said that I was the fastest guy in the pool. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he was he was joking. But I'm still pretty yeah. 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 Well, he was, like, I was fast that day. I don't swim much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, how is uh, how's it going in terms of uh, your relationship with each other? How was your? Uh, I, I know you guys had a big fight, big blowout on day one. Have you recovered from that yet? Oh, this was the, we, we started. Recovered. We started well. Very well. And there was some tension midway around I, I, lunch. I at one point said I was the real director, and then yeah. Dan at some point stormed out and said, well, why don't you talk to the director? Yeah, that was Because he was sarcastic in that. Yeah. Then I had to go run to the bank, and I wasn't thrilled about that. I thought I was going to have to bike, yeah. but I didn't have to bike, so that was good. Yeah. I think we're good now. Yeah, no, we're good now. Yeah, yeah totally. I think at the end of day two, because uh, we had some big group scenes, we, we were shooting with all the cast. Uh, I think we were we were a little bit behind. We had to catch up a little bit. So we left feeling really good about the material we got, but we knew we had to make up some time. And we also knew that the next day was our last day. So that was it. We only had one chance to get all the locker room stuff, and that was the next day. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because... Uh, <laughs> I get to uh, actually speak today 
at the end of the day. So there's just a whole lot of me like reacting and, and going, oh, mm, mugging. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, I actually get to say words. Okay. So okay. <laughs> watch out, You're world. Cash is going to be a talking. Here we are, back at it. Day three was a big one. Like everyone had hit, hit their stride, everyone's moving really well, but also you're starting to get a bit of fatigue because everyone's on such a high for those first couple days. They're so excited, happy to be there. Look at that. Oh. I'm ready for my close up. Grandma, make me a dang quesadilla. God darn it, Napoleon, you make your own dang quesadilla. And, and they had a lamb of lamb. The cast and I have been working together for only a couple days, but when you're working on a set, it, time feels like months. So they're already best friends, they have some inside jokes. Um, they're all professionals and, and amazing, so we never really lost track of people, but the, sometimes it takes a little longer to get get focused when everyone's uh, been there for a while and best friends. Yeah, that's He's just showing off his muscles. This is all a pretense about covering up that tattoo. But it's actually just him going, oh look, I have a tattoo on my arm. I think you missed the spot. Okay, now drop and give me 20. Trip drops and does angry push-ups. I like that. That's also in the production notes here. Uh, production notes. You know, props, props, blah, blah, blah. Production notes. Chip does push ups. <laughs> we got these delicious things too. Ooh, ooh. Let's get a close up of that sucker. That's, mm -hmm. that's you guys, let's try to change yeah. as quick as possible. They asked me to give them a second. Oh, okay. they asked you to give them a second. Okay. Crack <laughs> crackers now available at your local grocery store. Mm. Mm, so good. Buy them now. Going to day three, we had a lot of material still to get. We had some big group scenes still to shoot. Uh, we knew we had limited time and we knew we couldn't come back to the locker room. So there was the, the certain weight of uh, to get off the pot yeah. for the rest of the show. It was basically like Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy in Before Midnight. It's like, this is the time we have in the locker room and there's no, we'll meet again on a platform in Paris a year later. It's like, we shoot now and then like Julie Delpy's dead afterwards. Julie Delpy's the locker room and the, our production is Ethan Hawke or other, other. Books. Prefer to look at the other way. I yeah, think. we're much more like Ethan Hawke than we are Julie Delpy. Yeah. Debatable. Julia Delpy? <laughs> and frame. Action. What a complete and total dick. And whose fault is that? Like juice box. Don't love juice box me. Fuck my dad. Amy, yeah, he goes to the wide camera yeah. now. And then sit and then he's a little story that I got to tell about three bad brothers that you listen to. It's not a way back. It has to be with that rock MCA and me, Mike G. When I went to Jew Camp in Wisconsin, Paul Revere is the first uh, Beastie Boy song I had ever heard. And it, it blew my mind. And it was like, I was like, this is the craziest, loudest, angriest thing I've ever heard. And it's so cool. And then there was a kid there who knew all the lyrics. And I was like, that's it. I gotta learn all the lyrics of Paul Revere. We had a little horsey named Paul Revere. Just me and my horsey in a quart of beer. Riding across the land, kicking off sand. Got the share from my tail because I'm in demand. And I decided it would be a funny running gag to every time the behind the scenes camera came to me, I would just launch into Paul Revere. Yeah, and I, I didn't know about that until after, uh, and I saw all the clips. So. You particularly care for it either. Little, little did I know that while we're all trying to work, Mike's over doing a solo rap performance. <laughs> Looking for a girl, I ran into a guy. His name was MCA. I said, Howdy. He said, Hi. And then you gotta do a mic drop. The road mic is great. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you gotta pay for that, man. The locker room's an interesting, an interesting space because it's a point where they all have to be close together. They have to stand next to each other, listen to the bird. So it, it creates some drama in the in the space. Dave is a good man. Right? He's a top-notch contractor. He, he poured the concrete for our drive. The driveway is cracked at. Well, that's just normal wear and tear. Debatable. Structurally, our show is like the divine comedy. You start in Inferno, then to Purgatorio, then to Paradiso. You start in the basement, then you're at the bar, and then you're in the apartment and on the roof. So, in a way, the locker room is, uh, is the Inferno, you know? Where Virgil is your guide. 
Also, it's right after a win or a loss, right? We always take, we always see the ninth inning, the last play of the game. So we're coming into the locker room with some some heat, whether it's a win or a loss. There's some some yeah. energy going into it. Baggage, yeah, they come in with baggage. Yeah, almost like the characters in Dante's Divine Comedy, which I have read one third of. Today is the day where I actually have something to say <laughs> at the end of the day. And you're relieved that today is the day. <laughs> yeah. And should take a break. We're never happy, are we? No. <laughs> never satisfied. I have no lines. I have too many lines. <laughs> no. I mean, he had a big problem with he can call us. He knows he has a number. <laughs> but it, I mean, that's a that's a challenge when you're with nine actors and they all got time to, to come into their own and have their special Except moment. Except Daryl, apparently, the first but, two days. <laughs> But it takes uh, stewing in his juices. In, you know, in the uh, in the locker room, that was that was more no names place and yeah. Jess's place, the Berg's place. Yeah. The yeah. Berg was never in the apartment. You know, yeah. it wasn't even there. You don't see Peter Boyle complaining about not having a lot of lines in Young Frankenstein. You know, me? Yes, you. Oh. A bit pretty. Oh. Have you a mustache? Yeah. Nice. They have to put um, mascara because I have. Yeah. Your magnum PI. I have two gray hairs in my mouth. No, you don't. I do. Stop it. I can vote first, and I'm going to vote for Benjamin Berger. Uh, Jasnowski? Cashby? Jasnowski. Sometimes when I get tired and I'm like, you know what, I don't want a beer anymore, I realize. But there's uh, nothing yeah, better than being on the set. Oh, there you are, I'd much rather this than be at any day job or at home doing nothing. Mm -hmm. so I just look around, see all these beautiful people, and I'm exactly where I need to be. So I'm just sitting down, reflecting on that, getting my rest. Because tomorrow, or in two days, tomorrow night, you gotta be on set at 3 a.m. And that's when my day starts. Yeah. It's mentally preparing now. Got you, got you. So, uh, to answer your question, I'm doing great. At the end of day three, that was it for the locker room. I think we went a little over time on day three because we didn't have a chance to go back to it. We also ended with, uh, we wanted to shoot an angle of Andy going into her locker to get the shrooms. We're watching the clock on the overtime as our art department is literally taking a saw to the back of a locker. Um, so that was pretty exciting. It was a race against the clock. Really wanted to get it. It was a cool shot, um, but we didn't have much time. No. And we knew that if we screwed something up, we wouldn't go back. So there's a certain pressure there. Yeah. 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 At the end of the day, like Mike and I were really happy. We left feeling good and, and feeling like we had um, gotten that. It was also the locker room's a big a big location and and a big part of the story because it is when you first meet the people. So if the locker room stuff fell flat, if it was like boring or super slow or no energy to it, it would set every episode up in a, in a bad way. Mm -hmm. So there was a certain pressure to the performance and the, uh, the camera work and the energy within the scenes yeah. that, that was on the locker room as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. In the mattress store, we had to be out at a certain time because if we weren't out on time, we weren't in at the right time at the roof. Mm -hmm. And since we we're shooting overnight, we were also fighting the actual sun coming up. Just think about releasing the tension. Relax. On top of that, we also had the fact that some of these scenes had like suggested nudity. So there was a, a closed set which slows things down because it meant we couldn't have all the crew around. It meant when we were gonna rehearse and we were gonna really shoot, it meant we had to have people leave. Only uh, Michael and myself, a couple of key people were allowed to be around. <laughs> <sighs> Screw this, let's go drink. I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. Maybe we could cuddle. No, that's not happening. When you do nude scenes, this is getting more a union show, there's actually like a really strict way that you do them, which uh, at first maybe can seem like annoying, but actually is awesome because there's just guidelines for how you do it. 
Jess and, and Michael were great. They found some time to work together on it and, and rehearse and, and it looked great, felt great, but it- As an actor, sense. I've done a sex scene um, where I was topless, not totally nude. Um, and it's tough because you just have to find like your privacy and your intimacy in a place that's not private and not intimate. Um, but it helps when everyone knows the rules. What also just like, we all knew not to make jokes about it. Like it's just an obvious thing not to be like, bah, sex scene, um, which is good because it's just, it's professional people doing professional work. Because it, it was also an overnight. So yeah. It started at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Five, yeah, 5, 6 p.m. Yeah, 5 yeah. and then went till the morning, which is tough, which is always like, because you're, you know, you're, you're a little tired already by 6, you're like, good God. The roof actually had some quick scenes, some quick kind of two-handers, just people talking, but there's also some really emotional, kind of deeper scenes on the roof that we wanted to give the actors time to work and, and play and figure things out a little bit. If you were from Sri Lanka, what were you doing playing cricket in India? Well, you know how some Americans play for the Blue Jays. Yeah. The same principle. Yeah, but those guys are playing for real money. Yeah. This is real money in cricket. The roof also had the, the added um, safety precautions that we had to have ropes and guide wires. So it also meant only essential personnel are up there, which again means everything has to move slower. We had to really take our time. We had to make sure camera positions were set up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had to do walkthroughs where sometimes we just think, okay, let's, let's block the scene. Let's see where it goes. Let's try this, try that. Instead, I'd be very particular. You're going to go from here to there. And with this kind of show where you want the cast to be able to really feel free, this is one of those situations where we had to really close them up. Finding that location. This was actually one where Emily Andrews, our production manager, had a friend of a friend and she's so in tune with the city. She was able to, to hook us up with someone. And Mike and I, like it was, you know, a month before, a couple weeks before, went up, went up and just immediately like, this, this is, is it, it yeah. this is it. With the background of the whole city there, yeah. it's so great. It's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. In the future, I will insist that all of my houses come with um, Tyrannosaurus heads yeah. Yeah. in the dining room. That's, that's gonna be a must. So I'm actually doing my favorite scene I have for my, for my character trip. This is actually the scene that I, one of the scenes I auditioned with. And it's basically where Andy and I have our, our big moment where we realize that we're in love. Um, this is at a point of the season where Chip is conflicted with what he wants to, be, with who he wants to be. He doesn't know if what he's been doing for the past month or two has has been positively affecting him or negatively affecting him, and that's a good thing because he's lived a life of of um, of one layer, and now he's like learning about you know all the different layers of life. One of our favorite scenes, and part of why, why we picked Cordy on to be Chip, was the scene that he has with, uh, with Christy, with Andy on the roof at the end of the series. Uh, and we saved that for last. So we took one of the climaxes of the entire series and put it at the end of a, a big day when we're fighting the light um, and fighting the weather. Uh, but yeah, it was like a transformation moment for his character coming into his own mm -hmm. and we only had uh, a limited amount of time to shoot it. Uh, he also, I believe, his call time was like three in the morning or something. Like he also had to come to work in the middle of the night and do a, a massive scene. Um, so it was it was a big one for him and for everyone, but he, na he nailed it. Yeah, it's a scene where his, his character sort of turns and realizes as an existential moment of clarity about the, the, the rules that he had written for himself that he thought were permanent uh, turn out to be contingent and man-made and realize he lives in a world that is uh, frightening and free. And, uh, and then he gets, uh, he makes out with, with Andy. <laughs> it's good, I mean, that all good existential crises, crises should end with you making out with someone as a and it's, gift. It's a long, like it's, it's a long oh, scene it's so too. Long. There's, there's a lot of words in that one. <laughs> a lot of um, words. They had to perform it all the way through and, mm. and then kiss at the end. Mm. And they, yeah, it looked great. They, yeah, it looked did, great. And they, they did, did a great, great job. job. Yeah. Jinx. Great you job. owe me a coke. <laughs> so you're saying I can be anybody I want to be here? No, well, you can anywhere. The past is an illusion of structure, of order. But we're free in this eternal moment. End of the day felt really good. Um, 
was tired. There's a certain amount of adrenaline uh, all the way through that you're shooting and, and trying to get in and work until that last shot. And then once we called cut on the last shot and it was over, it was like this wave of exhaustion. S yeah, but also then like we, we had to wrap out really quickly. Mm -hmm. So it was like all hands on deck wrap, wrapping everything out and loading up the trucks. And then when that was done, I just remember going out and being like really, really, really like just brain dead. Just, I was like, oh, I got this. But yeah, the day, the, the day went really, it felt great, but we knew we also had the baseball day the next day, which is a massive day onto itself. Yeah. And in some ways, the way we built the show and the schedule was it, it was kind of like always leading to bigger and bigger, more ambitious days, you know, and like the, the mattress store and the rooftop was the most ambitious day yet. And then we were about to do another ambitious day. So it was, there was a sense of relief that we got that, but also the, the worry of now we have another big yeah. day coming up. Yeah. And it turned out to be quite the big day. All right, have a nice kid, have a nice kid. Come on, Here you sexy go. French best day. We have a beautiful night here, and uh, we're bundled a little bit, but it's, it's a gorgeous evening to shoot some baseball. We're shooting a scene that I'm not in, but it's, the action is all about me. I'm hitting a home run that wins the final game of the season, and uh, we're going to get the cameras tracked on the gang back in the dugout, uh, going crazy and having a ball. So we're having a, we're having a ball out here. It's, uh, it's a great night. Uh, it's staying dry, and uh, we just had our pizza break. You know, uh, so yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. So day five, uh, the baseball day is unique to the show in that there's a, essentially no dialogue. It was approaching it more like a music video or commercial shoot, broken up into very specific shots, very specific sequences. Bottom of the ninth. And we're all tied 5-5. Five, five. Like, it's fun to shoot sports stuff. It's different. We hadn't done it yet. It had been a lot of tight quarters, a lot of big casts. So we were, we were really excited to get out there and shoot some baseball, shoot some action. We had, you know, we had special skills extras coming out. We had different equipment. We have a lot, we had a lot of different special things that were only going to happen on this one day. Yeah. Berg is coaching Chip. Give me the, the serious, serious stuff. Action. This is the part of the project that's like the dream come true. Where you get to like really embody these characters and pretend like you're playing baseball. And spirits were high at the beginning. Everyone was super happy to be on the field. We had a couple of baseball enthusiasts on the team, a couple of people who couldn't play baseball. But uh, Ben, who plays No Name, was super, he was so jazzed to be out there. Uh, Linda fights the um. And like, and all the. Uh, you know, all of her dark past kind of bubbles out. She punches him in the face, and we're like, what, what is that? Because she's, throughout the whole series, she's this spiritual, like, a rock for us all, right? And she's very calm, but she's got this dark past that is revealed in the show. Uh, uh, and it, it looks out, and she pops this guy in the mouth, and then, man, No Name's got mad respect for that, yo. Mad respect for that. Mad respect for that. It's a powerful woman. Mad respect for that. <laughs> yeah, Linda. Thank you. The show is called The Ninth, and what happens in the ninth inning sets up the rest of the episode. It sets the tone. It's what the viewer sees first. It's when they click and they press play, this is what they see. So it had to have a certain production value, it had to look a certain way, it had to grab you, um, and it had to look like a hot summer night in Toronto playing baseball. That's a highlight reel play, folks. Fox Springs win. It's a baseball show. If we didn't have good baseball, it wouldn't be any good. There's not a lot of baseball in it, but what we had needed to be good. Ah, uh, but man, we're just we're going. You know, we're killing it. Everyone's doing really well. We got like a sick amount of like real baseball players here. Someone's got to make this look good. Today's what I would call the easier day. We don't have to say much. I mean, we don't say anything actually. We just do lots of uh, running, and we just have to look as athletic as possible. So I think by the time 7.30 a.m. comes around, it's probably around 11 p.m. Right now, I think when 7.30 a.m. comes around, we're going to be in a whole different mindset. So look at that smile. You're not going to see that. You're not going to see that very much longer. I'm going to tweak you. 
I think a lot of the anger is that my shoes are too small. Uh, so as a result, my toes are pinched, and I'm gonna use that to fuel the inner fire within me to be a dick of an up. Oh yeah, they are. These are like these are like size nine, and we're like elevens. So these are like my toes are like. Err. He didn't complain to us though. Like he was just always expressed. He was like so happy to be there, and he was so funny. Um, you know, he's got a small. It's a small part, but it's vital. He gets into a screaming match with uh, Linda, and he's so good at it. Oh, oh, come on. Strike three. Oh, to you. Oh, and she's not happy about it. Yes, that was three fucking long balls. You fucking cunt. Yikes. And he tossed her out! And he prepared, he did his research. Yeah, he's like he such knew. a great, he has an amazing attitude. The camera yeah. also loves him, he looks so good on camera, and he's so, he's so fun and vibrant. Yo, what is up with your friend there, yo? Trying to do you a favor? Mm-hmm. This fucking chick's mm -hmm. stabbing me. Mm-hmm, putting needles in my butt. How's that? Other than the small, tiny dancer shoes that are killing my toes and the big mask falling off my face, everything's great! We just shot all the dugout stuff. We're shooting the reactions of the crowd, uh, which we had some, some great actors in to do that. And we were framing up that shot and then it started to rain and then it started to rain harder. And then at one point the rain started going sideways. Ready. Our team is, is amazing. They have weather gear, they can shoot in that. But when rain starts coming sideways, you can't you can't set up a an umbrella or you can't set up a flag for that. Like that that'll shut you down. Definitely the producer side of my brain was starting to think about insurance and whether insurance would cover the day if we had to call it, which is just a terrible, terrible feeling. So at one point we were looking like, oh well we could shoot kind of shoot in the rain, we shoot around it, and then when the some lightning started, I was like, well we gotta we gotta stop. So we broke early for lunch having gotten like one tenth of the stuff we needed, like really didn't, and yeah. didn't have any of the, the real baseball plays yet. Didn't have any of the material needed to start the show. Which the whole show hangs on. So we did not have what was our cold open, but also what's like, we needed to get. It sets this. up the whole thing. Sets up the whole thing. Holy shit, look at this. This is like a mud bath. You borrow money to make the show. It's like, a, if we don't make the show, we don't get any of that money back and we're gonna be personally liable for hundreds of thousands of dollars and like it, the buck stops with me and Dan nobody else mm -hmm. nobody else cares ultimately it's our it's our show it's our problem then we start checking the weather and although it said it was gonna be clear it started saying it was gonna rain all night and it was raining pretty heavily and uh, the when it first started and I first checked my phone and was like yeah it's gonna rain till about 4 a.m. I was like oh my god did we just lose the show like is this is this what kills the show Just had a meeting um, to reevaluate what we're going to do today. Um, but honestly, it's the same plan, just a little different. Uh, trimmed a couple things back. Feel good. Done more with less. So, fuck it. It was a real war room situation. You know, everyone gathered up and danced. Where it was like, here's what we're doing. We wrote out a new shot list by hand. You have the. We went from went from this. This is what uh, this was supposed to be our afternoon, starting here. Each one of these represents an individual shot. To this. <laughs> That's the afternoon. Yeah. So uh, look out for that. There's a, there's a scene in a movie where someone's like, draws something out real simple. Oh yeah, it's like Apollo 13. When they're all sitting around, it's like, we're trying to get this into this. You know, they're all sitting around, they have to get those guys home from the moon. That's what it felt like. It was great. It was very exciting. How's our relationship, Dan? Pretty good. Snapped at him once in the meeting. Yeah. He was cracking wise. Yeah, it's and then, tense, then it's I a made, tense moment. Then I made like three straight points in a row where you're like, Michael's right. We yeah, I gave him, yeah. No, wait, when you're right, you're right. Yeah. Best idea wins. Best Always. idea wins. All right, we gotta go back okay. to work. We're going back to work. Let's do it. So went into the room and sat down with everybody and just 
literally kind of threw that away and just talked about, okay, these are the nine or 10 plays we absolutely have to get. And it was, it was just a, an exercise in, in what is absolutely necessary. What do we have to get? Yeah, stripping everything down to the bone and just knowing what the bones are. It's gonna be freaking awesome. We're, we're getting there and we're close. When we do get this in the bag, it's gonna be fucking amazing and everyone's gonna be super proud of it. So thank you so much in advance for killing it for part two of the, the wet baseball adventure. Thank you. It's hard because especially up until this point too, it felt like we hadn't made any sacrifices on the performance or on the look of the show. Mm. So here we were faced with, okay, well, we can't shoot the ground anymore and we can't shoot the sky anymore and we can't, you know, we have to tighten it up. But a testament to, to Dave, our director of photography, he was able to, to really still make it look amazing, make it not look like it was raining sideways. But it, it's hard when you, you spend all this time and money and energy planning and, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like yeah. there, was, there was no amount of trying on that day to to get any more that we got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just one thing else, you should know, it's, um... Now he's a little story that I got to tell about three bad brothers that you know so well. It's not a way back in history with that rock MCA and me, Mike, Mike D. D. We had a little horsey named Paul Revere. Just me and my horsey in a core of beer. beer. Riding across the land, kicking up sand. Got the sheriff on my tail because I'm in demand. One lonely beastie I be Wall by myself without nobody Body. The sun was beating down on my baseball hat, hat. <laughs> I gotta Cap. Yeah. 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 Close, close. Still rhymes and rap So the the day after the rain day uh, Woke up and called Mike And Mike and I had a long talk about what we got um, Went to Mika uh, Mika's place, our editor Looked at some of the footage and saw that we got some great material, but we were missing some really key stuff. We didn't have any wide shots. The very first sequence where Chip steals home, which is our first episode, um, you could see the rain. You couldn't see, we weren't able to shoot his feet. It looked like he was stealing third or home in Passchendaele in <laughs> World War I. Yeah, so we um, got on the horn with our production team and just said, what would it cost to get a, a quick, four hour pickup there, like a half day and down at the field. And um, it wasn't cheap. But we also talked about like, in all honesty, it's like, all right, if this is, we don't make any money off of this, would we still, would it be worth it? And we both yeah. were like, yeah, it'd be worth it. So we had to take all the material we lost on the baseball day, figure out what we still needed, compress that into three hours, plus with a small team, because we didn't have the money to bring all our cast out. Yeah. So we also had to find uh, look-alikes for our, our team. We had to bring the special skills extras back. We had to bring a couple key cast in to shoot yeah. with. Um, and then redesign some shots because the some of the ideas were no longer gonna work. Uh, so had to change change that. And then we had to also wear multiple hats. like. You know, people came out and did other things. Literally, I'm also one of the guys who's sitting in the bleachers and have to change my hat. <laughs> I think we got we got a real, you know, we were coming off a real high after that day because yeah. we, we felt like we were back on track. We'd gotten what we needed and the, the opening sequences of the show were gonna be what we wanted them to be. Now, there was a butterfly effect, which is that yes. the, the, we had a three day break. We were supposed to have a three day break from the baseball day to when we started in the apartment. Or two days. Uh, two days, but like two and a half. But a yeah. day and a half got basically eaten up by organizing and shooting this pickup day, which would then have reverberations down the road where things that we were supposed to do during that break didn't get done and kind of rolled over. Great. It's great. Do you need any help? We ain't playing. Tommy Hilfiger. Tommy Fig Hilfiger. Fuck. Uh, One more time. Tommy Hilfiger. Tommy Phil. Beep. Tommy Mill. Tommy Mill. Tommy Hilfiger, 1992. What's up now? What's up now, baby? What's up now? Day six was our first day at Chip's apartment. It's another beautiful day in show business. This is like, had to have the right look and the right feel. We have to be able to do the right, get to it. We had to paint on some of the walls and draw on I need to have a bathroom in the right place. No, there's gotta be a dick. I, I, Come on, I, get us some dick. I can draw a good dick. Do you have the blue one? You can draw a great dick. It was another one of those times where it wasn't perfect, 
but it was close. And then with the work of our, our production designer and art director, director of photography, we were able to make it the perfect place. It's tough because it was also, I think there were other tenants there, sometimes a busy place. We so had to use the bathroom of the upstairs neighbor who like, they knew about it and we we had given them a little bit of money to use it, but they were always like, when people would come upstairs, they'd be like, hi. We'd be like, hi, so I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the bathroom. They're like, sure. They weren't, they weren't unfriendly, mm. but they were sort of skeptical about the whole setup. Which I understand, I wouldn't want to watch people using my bathroom. But it ended up, it ended up working out so well. And it was cool, we were, able, we were able to paint it, we were able to do things to it, uh, make it our own. Yeah. Um, so it worked out to be a great location. Smoke but fake weed in there. Yeah, Got run, the run the smoke machine. The job description of our department is so all encompassing. <laughs> <laughs> they need to use fake marijuana. If you smoke that much weed in a show, uh, everyone's gonna be too high to work, I assume. So uh, they have different things. I'm not sure what product they use, but uh, yeah, our, our... It's like herbal, it ends up being sort of like an herbal cigarette. It smells really gross. It's not yeah, a great smell. smell. But it looks, it looks real. Like it needs to, it needs to kind of burn a certain way. It needs to be green. It needs to be able to break up into the joints. So, uh, but yeah, Chip's apartment is where they party, right? It's the party place. Like they, they drink in the locker room, they drink in the bar, but where they really party is Chip's apartment. So we, we had to, to create a, a fun party environment mm. in there. Yeah. Uh, and fake weed and fake drugs and lots of fake alcohol in there. Yeah. Today's actually a pretty light day for me on set. Uh, uh, I don't have to do a lot of speaking, though I do have to eat a scorpion. On that day, we also had the scene from the Balk episode where No Name's character eats a scorpion. He knew that it was his moment and he was going to take that it's moment. It's a classic Ben Blaze thing all days. Like, I'm eating a f***ing scorpion today. Like, I'm so excited. He was pretty pumped on yeah, it. Yeah, he's pretty pumped. I gotta, I gotta say no, not a lot of experience eating scorpions, but I do enjoy trying new things. He's laughing at me. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I love, uh, I love a good adventure. Put your arms around them. Look them in the eye. And you say, Hey there, I got a thing for you. That scene in the bathroom, which was like the first thing we shot in that apartment, uh, we just knew it was like, it was happening, it was, it was clicking. Uh, but that was fun, we got to, we had to put up a fake wall within the bathroom and like tape it up and there was a whole lot going in there and then you jam two people in there, a <laughs> camera. So it was, a, it was a hard scene for them to do because it had to be so intimate uh, while working in a tight space with a camera, but they, they did amazing and, and took great direction, great yeah. adjustments. Yeah, it was really fun. Damn! No, I feel so stupid. I don't know. Are they serious? We're gonna do, we're gonna do 12 hey, now. Buddy. So stay right there. Hey, Money, boys. Money. It's great. It's feeling in the other room. Yeah, okay, so let's everybody. release Cass for a sec. Right, Cass thanks. on a relax. Okay, guys, you can... Let me get all our department hands on set, please. Yeah, just call them. We're gonna eat a scorpion. The yes. first shot after lunch. Yeah. Eating a scorpion. Make sure you tag uh, Ben Blaze. Ask him about if he's excited to eat a scorpion. Yeah. Because I bet he is. Uh, but we only have four of those, so he four. doesn't he doesn't get to eat too many of them. Yeah, I don't think he's ever gonna eat more than four scorpions. <laughs> you get a stomach ache after yeah. that. But no, it's going it's going really well. It's a good day so far. Yeah. Mike and I fought. Uh, it was like the top of the day. Um. Yep. Yeah. Top of the day, but we someone, squashed someone it. Someone asked to squish, uh, to squish. Yeah. Someone asked to change your mind. But we're good. It's, a, it's going yeah, a great yeah, day, yeah, and thanks for it. coming. It's really great. So Doing here, great. Dan, you can wipe. A huge part of our team as well is Jason Kennedy, one, the of the one of the producers and executive producers on the project. Um, Jason is, is often the man behind the scenes pulling off um, wonders and magic. He's, he's like, the make it happen kid. Yeah, right? like we the, call Jason, we're like, we need this and he makes it happen. Yeah. Um, which is so, so fundamentally important to having our crew, having our gear, having yeah. our, like he just is making it happen and supporting us as an executive. And he understands, producer. he understands the, the creative side, he understands mm. the business side and he understands what, what needs to happen. And he knows Michael and I really well. Mm. We've worked together for a long time. Mm. Um, and it's just one of those things that he's a person who you can call, you can meet with, 
mm. and and he knows when when something needs to happen, he he makes it happen. He's he's the man behind the man. <laughs> yeah. They're like I've, I've, I've had um, I've had grasshoppers on the stem. Yeah, I bet with a little steam poisoning. Okay. Can't wait. It's going on my Instagram. I gotta go, guys. Uh, the next scene is uh, a trip uh, through the uh, the haze of Goa scorpion wine. Nice uh, though. Rumor has it the bravest man is the scorpion. And, uh, it's clear that Tony, the Yasmanian devil, is one of the bravest men in the room. And so I will be eating a scorpion. And uh, it ain't no prop scorpion. It ain't no jujube. This shit's the real deal. Yeah, so I think it's one of these. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. There he is. 16, Charlie, take two. Tally. Mark? Yeah. Frank? Yeah. Scorpio, I'm a cancer actually. Yeah. yeah, where's Maddie? She said she wants to wait. We don't have all day. Let's see what he's got. This guy looks like this guy looks a little like muscular. Yeah, yeah, you need the cigarette. Yeah, that, that's a juicy one. This is a juicy one. That's a good one. This one's a little <laughs> This guy yeah, looks yeah. crazy. Yeah, I'm an expert. <laughs> Look how thick he is. <laughs> oh my god. Like he has some muscles. Look at his arms. He's ready to get ya. He's jacked. Are you sure there's no side effects from this? No, no, man, I'm tripping. Oh my god, it's, no. It was, it was in candy. All right, Maddie, you have five, four, three, three. Maddie! She's not even there. Two. Even there. It'll be on tape. Cheers. Oh my god, oh my god. No! Mm. <laughs> Play candy. Good job. You got it. <laughs> Dude, that's so weird. There was extra scorpions and Cordion ate one. The problem is like the one, the scorpion that Cordion ate was I think a better looking scorpion than when we got Ben eating. And I, I feel, I'm frustrated by the fact that Cord we got the better scorpion than the behind the scenes thing. Cordion looks awful when he's eating. <laughs> he looks so unhappy. Um, it's really funny. But I think, and it, it's a testament to how good the actors are that got it in one take. Like yeah. We only only shot him eating the scorpion once. We had like three of them. Yeah. Um, but he, he nailed it, so. Swallow, swallow it, swallow, swallow it. Ah, oh, you can't swallow it, do it, swallow it. Uh, ah. <laughs> how come we can hear yours crunch and not theirs? Cause that was juicy. Oh. Yours was so crunchy. It's done, I need that a water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. Hear it. <sighs> Maddie, I thought you got sidetracked. No, I was trying to get my phone. You let me down. Leaving day six, we also, the next morning, something we were supposed to shoot on the baseball day, but we weren't able to get, was a sunrise shot of the Berg and Linda for the very last shot of the entire series. And so we looked at the schedule afterwards and realized, well, let's, let's put that at the end of the baseball day. It makes sense to, well, we couldn't get that. So we had to then add it to the top of our seventh day. So we also had to do that on top of shooting all in the apartment as well. You know, we I think we're feeling pretty good. It was a rough start to the day. We were behind, we were exhausted, but we got in such great stuff. The apartment really felt like the right space. We were working. It was like definitely not an easy space to work in, but I think we were, I think we were, I think we left that day uh, on a high, feeling like fuck yeah. it, we're back on track. Yeah, we'd shot. Little did we know. <laughs> yeah that the next day was going to have some several wrinkles, several wrinkles in it. And then added another, let's see, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 on top. Hmm? I'd fucking call. Uh, what if I put down 
200 more. It's a ton of fun to shoot a poker scene. Like, all, I think a lot of the cast were super jazzed. Daryl especially uh, was really into it. Uh, he get Cash, his character gets to kind of lead it, so it's a lot of fun for him. The poker scene is the is the site of my my biggest regret. Can mm. I can I confess? Totally. So there's two things that the cast f***ed up, and I don't blame them for it because they don't really play poker. Mm. But in the script, they say something like 23 to go, 15 to go. And they assume that that was dollars. The truth is when you play poker, Texas Hold'em, usually you buy in, so you get 3,000 chips for 10 bucks or 20 bucks, and then you're betting hundreds. So when you say 23 to go, you mean 2,300. That doesn't mean 2,300 dollars, it means 2,300 out of your 3,000 initial stack. So it's however many buy-ins, you know, determines what that is. But they kept on saying 23 bucks to go, which in a way was like, that's that's not right. It's not right. They kept on adding dollars. Which and we had Daniel Igranu there, yeah. World Series of Poker champion, was supervising. And so the fact that he missed that. Yeah, he missed that. Is that like, it, bo it bothered me, but not <laughs> enough to like have to reshoot the whole thing. So I was like, whatever, you could still play. Like, the truth is like, you could play buy-in, you get 50 chips for 50 bucks, and then 23 chips is, $23. So it's yeah. not it's not crazy, but just not how I've ever played. And Getting the, caught in the weeds comes to mind. Dude, I like poker and believe me that people are gonna comment and be like, dude, 23 bucks, this is weird. Let's see. Stack. Catch it. Catch it. And then number two, now this is the bigger regret that everyone who plays poker is gonna catch. When it's heads up between cash and no name. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And he says the the idea in the script is that he doesn't actually raise. He says, what if I did raise this? And then No Name says, I would call. Because obviously you can't raise and then re and re raise on your that's own raise. That's crazy. So the, the idea is him saying, you should just fold. What if I bet 100 bucks? And he's like, if you bet 100 bucks, I will call you. Okay, what yeah. if I bet 200 bucks? If you bet 200 bucks, I would call you. But that somehow kind of got translated into him actually raising, No Name actually calling, and then Cash actually raising again, which is completely against the rules of poker. But please let that slide because it's so great. Also, in the actual drama of the scene it works really well it raises the stakes if you will yeah uh, in a way that theoretically if they were raising would not work as well so though it's not correct for the viewer and for their performance it probably works better that they were doing that yeah but the, you know I mean you don't rewrite the rules of poker to suit anyways you, uh, maybe anyone, you do. anyone who doesn't like this episode uh, come tweet at me yeah I'm at real Donald Trump just tell me what you think. Yeah. Roll camera, lock it up. Yeah. All right, rolling, rolling. Roll sound, roll camera. Where are we going from? Speedy? From your big moment? Uh, I, I don't know. No, we're gonna go. We're gonna go from you just sat down. You're playing. So we're kind of low profile now because the uh, woman who lives downstairs from our location of the apartment is called the fire department, the police, and the bylaw people, and now the landlord is coming by. We have permits, she was informed, we've offered to pay her, we've offered to put her up in an apartment. She's uh, being difficult, um, so we're just trying to keep everything kind of quiet. She ran her vacuum during the last two scenes. What happened was she started to get pissed off, and I'll mm -hmm. say that she behaved irrationally. So yes. we instantly were like, okay, what can we do to help? We can, you know, we can do this, we can do that, we do that, we offer her money, we offer her, why don't we put you up in a hotel room for the day? Why don't we mm. do this? Or whatever you want. Why don't you have a walk on part? Yeah, like, we, we basically were just like, what do you want us to do to make it right? And we'll do it. Like, we, we weren't busting her balls. And she mm -hmm. would not cooperate. Cooperate in any sense. And then it started to get testy. She went back into her apartment, she started running the vacuum. So she the, the, us out. the music. She started turning up the music, she was stomping. And she just kept on like coming upstairs and yelling at people. And we're mm -hmm. like, we totally understand. Mm -hmm. What can we do to help? And she's like, well, you guys have to just leave. And we're like, well, we're allowed to be here. We have permission from the landlord. We have permission from the city of Toronto. So the fire department comes in. They look around and they're like, this is fun. It's not a fire hazard, obviously, because we're a, a Yeah, and I think they, they were company. they were in there. Like, oh, what are you guys filming? Yeah, this guys looks filming. cool. Yeah. Everything's safe here. Good electricians. Yeah. Gaffer knows what he's doing. All right, like, way to go, yeah, guys. Go. Have fun. And they left. Yeah. And so she was furious again. So we called the landlord, the landlord finally comes and talks to her. And then I got to witness some of the conversation between the landlord and the woman where he was like, well, you know, I told you they were gonna film this. And she's like, well, you know, they're loud. And, and, and in the morning there was someone in the way of the door. And he's like, well, they're not there now. And you know, they're offering this. So eventually we like, we said like, we'll just mm -hmm. pay you some money and we'll be gone by seven. And this was our last day. There's like, you're never gonna see us again. But uh, everybody, everybody was good. I think the most rattled was Mike. And, would, and on a on a shoot, rattled. that's that's the best. Well, you want, wasn't you want Mike to be the most rattled. I don't know. Not the not the cast. I don't know if I'd say it was not rattled. the team. 
So I was just know. like, the truth is, money has a way of making people see reason. Mm. And I assumed the whole performance was to try to get some more money out of us. So when I was like, yeah, like let's give some money. And that didn't work. Keep me like, in mind that we didn't have really much money. No, so it wasn't not like tons. the old like Hollywood, like, all right, let's go get a stack of cash. Like our stack was not a stack. No, no, totally. But nonetheless, I was surprised mm. that that wasn't what, that didn't instantly ratchet down the tension. <laughs> I, t I gave him the lowdown about the downstairs neighbor. Yeah, so uh, big day today. Uh, we talked a little bit at the start. We have a, a lot to do. Uh, had the fire truck called on us. Uh, the na neighbor's not really playing ball, despite our crew having all the permits, paying the landlord properly, doing it all by the book. We have a, uh, a uh, downstairs, downstairs neighbor who doesn't like yeah, the I filming process. Neighbor. It's also possible that my constant yelling has led to yeah. this. So they have given me a walkie-talkie, and I've been told to use it. So tell them we'll about see. Your, tell them about your shirt. I want them to know about um, your shirt. So this um, was used in the original uh, Tommy Bahama ad campaign. That's true. So it's George I, Clooney, one know, of his first big breaks. Yeah. George so it's kind of like it's kind of a special piece. You got it at um, the at auction. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't cheap, but oh, it was not cheap. But it's you know, you pay bit, for quality and you pay for the legacy. A bit of George Clooney's sweat still on it. Yeah. You still smell. It smells yeah, like ER good. era sweat. You can yeah, tell. Yeah, it's different, right? Yeah, he's he using a different like cologne. I yeah. Think. Well, it's just Anywho, like he's not as um, rich yet. Right when, we come, <laughs> right when we come back, uh, we owe some, some special stuff on Sad Andy, who's doing some great things by the window. Uh, Going to shoot out this big poker game. Then we got two other giant scenes, then a couple small scenes and we have to wrap out to have an early day tomorrow. And tell them about the elevator. Right, so the elevator no, no, that we built what about the elevator? is not functioning. Let's try so it again. Hold on. we're building a new elevator in the back of this truck, so stay tuned for that. Okay, tell them about the elevator. Say what about the elevator. Okay. Tell them about the elevator. Yeah, so we got this elevator <laughs> and it's huge, so right? Job, but it has yeah. this Don't whole like, weight me. system. Okay, go ahead. Tell them about the elevator. What elevator? No, you gotta say, what about the elevator? Let's try it one All more right, time. All right, we're back. Tell them about the elevator. What about the elevator? It goes up and down. Ba -dum -ba -dum. <laughs> more rats. <laughs> I mean, in the end, this day was tough. It was challenging. We had a lot of stuff to do, but we got what we needed to get. We were like, we were a little bit over in time and the wrap out, I remember being zany. It was a zany feeling trying to get everything out of there because the landlord was like, <laughs> but we got it and we got out of there. And um, I remember feeling relieved that it, there's a nice feeling when, especially you're in a location that hasn't been super friendly to be like, Never see you later. Place. Yeah, goodbye, yeah. goodbye. Location. I love the location. And then we were, and then it was on to the bar, which was, which is a huge part of the show. And we still had a ton of pages to get. Um, and little did we know there was some other big hiccups on the way with our cast. Yeah, so, so there was more plagues in store for us in the bar, but uh, we overcame them. No, no, you don't say we over uh, there. That uh, was the, the bar. Uh, I, I set it up with the, the little did we know. And, you know <laughs> yeah, little, little that's did true. We, little did we know. You played me. You fucked me, Gold List. Little did we know the bar was going to deal us some pretty spicy cards. Catch it. Before we go, I'll talk to you a little bit about what we're going to do. But you're, you're playing a bartender. And we won't overthink it. Cool. Right. right on. Yeah. I'm just feeding myself drinks, not everyone else. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be the opposite bartender. <laughs> Day eight. We had three days at the bar, so we knew we had some time to play with, but this was the most dialogue heavy location. Mm -hmm. And we had some special stars, some special guests coming in. Hi, I'm Tia Patia, and my role on the ninth was an extremely vulgar cricket fan, which was a lot of fun to play. My name is Peter Czerwinski, uh, also known as Furious Pete in the online world, and I play a bartender on the night. And you know, the cast and crew have been going gangbusters for a while, so I don't think anyone was tired or fatigued, but it was definitely like, 
you know, we were in the, we were in the shit. There's that a was potential for that to happen. Yeah, there's potential for that to happen. Yeah. There's a little bit of stress. Daniel, the director, was sobbing um, behind the bar. Uh, he had a bottle of Hennessy in his hand, but just <laughs> edit that part out because, you know. Oh, Maybe a little over to your right. A little more. Okay. I'm filming at the Monarch uh, Tavern in the west end of Toronto, a place close to my heart. I used to go there, get Kaplanskis, back when Kaplansky was slinging smoked meat out of there. My dad used to drink there in the 70s, so. We were excited to shoot there. A lot of our cast knew it and had been there before. Yeah. And so we were we were excited to get in there and start going. Yeah. So on the day <laughs> when we play? shoot that scene, you're there, and the idea is they're talking through you. So, uh, so I'm on the far side on the booth. No, so you're you're sitting oh, at the oh, end oh. of the table, right? Yeah, okay, coffee. I know, it's not proportionally, not to scale. Uh, we had to shoot during the day as if it was night, so we had to black out all the windows, we had to dress it. The production designer and art department team didn't get as much time as they would have liked. They worked super fast. Uh, but again, it's a location show with not a huge budget, so they didn't have a, a full day ahead of time to dress the location. So we were fighting the clock from, from the start. Right here, right now in front of me. No, no, it can't, no, it can't be. Well, why would he be in Toronto? Look at him, open your eyes, it's him. Uh, yes, hi. In this episode that we were filming, Catchy gets caught and outed by two cricket fans who recognize him and kind of throw some shade on him for being a, a travesty. He's the, you know, he's the Lance Armstrong, the Tanya Harding of cricket. So he gets recognized by these two fans. They're played brilliantly by uh, Tia Bacchia and Richard Young. Oh, this? This is great. This is something special, eh? I mean, a picture of me with the biggest loser in cricket? <laughs> Tia, who uh, is the daughter of famed Raptor super fan Nav Bhatia, who I've been a fan of personally for years and years because I thought I was the only one who noticed that that guy had been at every game. Before anyone was following people on Instagram, Twitter, I was like, I feel like that guy's at every game. And then like finally, uh, you know, I followed him and I was like, he's been at every game. I was like, it wasn't just me, he really is. He's a guy who sits courtside at Raptors games since 95. He's, um, he's awesome and T is a big Raptors fan and like a big part of like the Raptors culture. So it was super exciting working with her. She's the best, she's so fun and lovely. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so true. People like you ruined cricket. Oh, killed it. No respect for the game. Z to the hero. Okay, that's enough, get the fuck out of my bar. Suck a dick, cheater. Go on, get the fuck out of here. Brampton, fall. Brampton, never heard of it. Go the fuck out of here. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I haven't ever done anything so aggressive where, you know, I said something vulgar or um, I bully someone. I'm usually the person who's getting bullied or I play the victim role and stuff like that. So that was really interesting. I've never done anything like it and I'm very excited to see how it's going to transition onto screen. Tia and Richard did, did a great job. It's always difficult for um, cast to come in, you know, for one day mm -hmm. and get injected into uh, a machine that's been rolling. The cast is super tight. Mm -hmm. By this point, they have a shorthand. They work together a certain way. So to be thrust into that in in a big scene, like it's you know, it's not just a oh walk by with a beer and spill it or something. Like they they had to really go at Cash. Um, bring a lot to it. There were lines, there was there was some interesting blocking going on. We had a camera in there. So they they did great. And Tia and Richard played off one in, one another in, in a great way. Yeah. Um and it was just it was just fun. Like it was it was exciting to to get them all in there fighting it out. Daryl also does a great job and the way that Tia and Richard are like coming at him and the way Daryl uh, who plays Cash is able to you kind of like you see his heart like break in the scene. You see him, you know, turn in on himself and uh, it's it's a good scene. Yeah. Catch it. Emmy Emmy Award nominated. Day Daytime Emmy Award. Daytime Emmy nominated. Award nominated. Nominated. It's nominated for a nomination. Yeah, it's nominated By for me. a nomination. By me, I've nominated it to be nominated. Yeah, catch it. Catch it. He, yeah, it was great. Really fun. Get the f out of my bar. So Furious Pete uh, came out this day as well. Furious Pete plays the bartender in the series. Um, he he was a great guy, like brought his own flavor to it, kind of made the character his own. All right, that's it. Get off the premises. Get the hell out of my bar right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm decent with interacting with the public and, and, and with food and all that, but this is a totally different world. I know it is. 
Um, you know, being able to immerse yourself in that role is, isn't easy. If obviously if something goes well here today, uh, then I'm always down to learn. I like learning, so, but I know, I know, I know it'll take a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of effort for sure. He's a presence, like he showed up on set and I mean, he looks built and buff on his YouTube channel, but he showed up, I was like, this guy's 10 times like just strong. He is a big guy. And he's just a presence. Like he walks in, people are like, hmm, guys. But he just is, <laughs> he's handsome and he's just large in the life. Really nice guy, super easy to work with, work with, very laid back, like very, um, very nice, but he's he's a he's kind of a, a bit of an intimidating presence. Yeah, it'd be um, interesting to know if Dave. We didn't ask Dave if Dave had to light differently because because he's so big. Like you have to, you gotta like move things around a little bit. There's a great moment when Furious Pete comes around the bar and picks up No Name, and you see because of the way we lit it, you see this shadow get cast upon Ben No Name. <laughs> And it's just really funny because you you see it coming, he doesn't see it coming, and you couldn't have planned that any better. Just this like big yeah. imposing shadow coming towards. We him. we had some Furious Peep like super fans on our crew yeah. who were all like super like that's Furious Peep, and they're all just like um yeah what you this. Like they were like really uh, they were very cute around him, which was really fun. I like, I like, like the arms out. Yeah. Okay. He's got we'll a big gun. Yeah. yeah do you mind? Furious Pete. He's got a big gun, but he says he's not pumped, but like these are like some bazookas. He's not a big, he's a big guy. <laughs> They're bazookas. Man, it's a fun cameo. I wonder, you know, there's there's gonna be people watch the show and be like, is that? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. They'll like, make that exact face. <laughs> is that? Yeah. But it's, That's what most of our viewers look like. It's an East, it's another Easter egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got... One, two, three, four more scenes. And then I get to eat pizza. Yes. Hell yeah. Lots of pizza. We're gonna get fat today. Real greasy and fat. Mmm. My forte. <laughs> seafood. Seafood pasta Alfredo. Some seafood pasta. Seafood pasta Alfredo. Some Alfredo pasta with seafood. <laughs> Make sure you wave your hands around. <laughs> <laughs> Fettuccine Alfredo is a specific thing. I know, it's like an actual thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's kind of funny that this that bar is. doesn't have it. They have another thing. Yes, that's, that's a thing. But I think past, yeah. pet pasta. Seafood right? pasta Alfredo. Yeah, seafood pasta Alfredo. Yeah. What else would Alfredo be? Exactly. Okay, Alfredo. seafood pasta Alfredo. Yeah, seafood. We're going to go seafood yeah, pasta already. Alfredo. Okay, okay, all right. Where are you going? I got to go get some air. We were getting ready to shoot another kind of big scene with uh, Neil and Ben and pretty much the whole cast. Mm -hmm. When he was getting ready to uh, to go and go into processing and get changed, he started to come down with something. He wasn't feeling well. Mm -mm. Um, he went and actually uh, rested for a little bit, got some alone time. We called him up and it was like, he was like, yeah, I've had this before. I think I should I go to the know. hospital. And then we had to take five, everybody like take a few minutes mm -hmm. and we had to sit with our AD our DP, Mike and I sit down and start moving the day around. We were most worried about Neil, like, yeah. I mean, obviously able to focus and, and get it, but we, you know, we had to see, is Neil coming back? Are we rescheduling am, the show? Am I gonna play the Berg? Yeah, is, is Michael gonna be the Berg? Um, <laughs> so when we wrap- Just trying to look like him, just trying yeah. to get my hair cut. So we, we obviously didn't want to bother him. We we looked at the next day, but at wrap, it was like, okay, are we, are we postponing filming? Are we gonna keep shooting? What are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. And that's when we had a marathon rewrite and rescheduling yeah. session. Yeah. So Mike, Mike, our AD, myself, uh, line producer, producers, we went back uh, to my place actually, mm -hmm. sat down, ordered a pizza, yeah. and first things first was we figured out how we could, well, first things first, we ate a pizza. Oh, I had, had some, some scotch as well. Scotch as well. That was pretty important at that point. Um, we have Neil in pretty much every other scene, so maybe we should rewrite so an episode. It was this actually I do believe was a fortuitous accident. So episode seven is <clears throat> episode six. Six is the vote. <clears throat> That's when they're trying to canvas votes to uh, it is the, the manager vote between No Name and the Bird. So then the original script that we had going in with our shooting script was that both of them sit down with every other um, character and kind of try to convince them to vote for mm -hmm. them. Canvassing for votes. Canvassing for votes. It didn't feel true 
to to the Berg for him to be canvassing the team for votes. Yeah, it's a very no-name thing to do to hit the campaign trail. Yeah. So Berg, not so much. So we were just we were just like, well, fuck it. I I was always under the suspicion that some or most of those scenes wouldn't make it into the end. Mm -hmm. It was also kind of a long episode. It was already a long page so, count, yeah. So we figured, okay, so forget that. The Berg is, you know, equanimous in the face of this adver, uh, you know, adversary. He's equanimous in the face of this adversity. <laughs> He's equanimous yep. in the face of adversity. He's equanimous in the face of adversity. You know, he's very calm and stoic in the face of adversity, so he's yes. not going to canvas for votes, yep. but uh, no name would. So we started rewriting those scenes to fill them out a little bit more, and me and Dan... And it just started happening. It was so great, and actually, I wasn't rattled. This was... Uh, you were much more rattled every other day. I wasn't rattled at all, but I was excited. I was like, this feels like... I remember hearing a story when I was studying theater history in college, which was like, that like when uh, in the original run of um, Streetcar Named Desire that, you know, uh, Tennessee Williams would be at rehearsal all day and then he'd get drunk and write all night for rewrites. And I was like, that's so romantic. Like, yeah. and this felt like that. It was just like, all right, we're pulling an all nighter and we're just going to rewrite these scenes, send him out to bed. <laughs> He's going to have to do them the next day. So we, we just wrote, and by that point we knew the show, we knew our characters, we knew what they could do. We wrote the scenes and those remain probably my favorite. Yeah. It's, it turns out to be a great episode. Um, so we finished writing around like one in the morning or something and then it's like sent that out to our production team who then had to send it out to the cast and that meant a really really big rewrite being shot the next day yeah. which is not ideal no but as we'll see a certain thing could happen and did it catch it catch it the Irish accent is one of the hardest, 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 hard hair. It's one of the hard, hardest, hard. The Irish accent is one of the hard, hardest accents. I'm sorry if I'm offending you right now, <laughs> but this, this is my process. It's okay, I don't this is my process. Searsha. 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 Yeah. Searsha Ronan. Searsha Ronan. Searsha Ronan. Searsha Ronan is one of the Strong, strongest, strongest, strong, strong, <laughs> strong, strong. There we go. Strong, 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 strong. strong. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Morning. We're at this point, we're on our ninth day of shooting. Yeah. You know, the cast has been going hard. We're shooting a lot of pages, not a lot of breaks, just enough turnaround to, to have everybody back and get some sleep. So people are starting to get tired. Yeah, when you work on a show and you're doing 12 hour days and we were doing 12 hours at least with, you know, tear down and set up, it was longer. You don't really have time for anything else. You wake up, you work, you work, you work, you work, you go home. Maybe you get to watch like uh, one episode of Friends on Netflix before you go to bed. That's like your, that's it. a relax. Mr. Lonely, I've got nobody. I think some people were starting to get a little sick and yeah. And a, a film set's like a petri dish. Yeah. One person starts to get sick, it starts moving around. So you're trying to like keep that it's, at bay. It's like kindergarten. Everyone's just eating off the floor. Yeah, it's, it's essentially just, like everyone don't, There's always a craft bowl of like wet cheese and everyone's just going <coughs> and then reaching into the wet cheese and just rubbing it. Everyone's yeah. like, yeah, give me some of that wet, moist cheese. Pro tip, bring okay. your own snacks. Yeah, don't do that. Craft, man, that's how you save money. We had found out that Neil was, was doing better. Mm -hmm. He'd been released from the hospital. We knew he wasn't going to be able to come the next day. So we had to essentially rewrite mm -hmm. one of the episodes to um, to not have Neil in it. It was like that scene in Apollo 13 where they have all the gizmos on the table and Ed Harris is like, you got to fit this round thing into this square thing. Yeah, I got to see the I got to see the thing. Yeah. Wow, they put me in an extra scene. Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. The, the show was the square. <laughs> the show was the astronauts. The show no, was the, the astronauts. The, square, the show's right? the shuttle. We're trying to bring right, the shuttle right. home. And they're putting the astronauts through the, the but, circle. But the consequences were a touch bigger in our circumstance because really those astronauts kind of signed up for a dangerous job. But the problem is your ego is out of control. Your phone. Oh, sorry. Okay. 
take it back wherever you want. Who wrote this? <laughs> Sort of rewrote the scene, focused a little bit more on No Name, which made sense. And uh, the the only challenge with that is we basically dumped I don't know two extra pages of dialogue on Ben Blaze for the next morning. But uh, yeah, which he didn't which he didn't get essentially till his ride to set. Yeah, he woke we up finished, that morning yeah. and he's like, oh. <laughs> but we knew he could handle it. Yeah, and he did. He did. He and hit it out of the park. Looks like you got yourself a good old fashioned sex. Let the games begin. Basically, what's happening right now is Jess, Jesse, broke, it's about to break my heart. I mean, we're here drinking. Well, I'm not drinking, I don't drink, but they're all drinking, you know, getting loose, and they kind of go to my apartment, and I find out the bad news, and it breaks old little Chip's egg of a heart right in half, and makes a Heartbroken omelet. It's, it's real, real, real sad. It's all because of this she devil. Hi. I can't help it. I can't help it. Guys just fall on their knees and like I, I don't even, you know. She's what? I just said guys fall on their knees, so. This is for you. Sorry, not sorry. Like that. <laughs> just kidding. Chip is gonna find a new love interest. Soon. I'll tell you that much. No doubt. Are you Stella? Yeah, I am. I'm Cortian. Nice, nice to meet you as well. Welcome uh, to the show. I wasn't here yesterday, so I know this is not your first yeah. day. This is my first day. Today? Oh, okay. well, welcome, welcome to the set. Thank you. Glad to have you. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm Stella McCool, and I play Trish on the 9th. Stella McCool has great presence. She showed up, and people were very like, just like with Furious Pete, people, she has an aura. I think people were, even the people who didn't know who she was, she was like, they were, this like you know she's really beautiful and she's really fun and lovely she's also very laid back and sweet mm -hmm. and she doesn't have a, she didn't have like a, an egotistical bone in her body she was great to work with but she's certainly like she's certainly impressive people were impressed with her and it's like we, this is good this is, we've got good cameras we've got good mics everything the small play is really big so okay. it's just like you just sit keep your natural energy okay. there and then we'll, we'll wave it back okay. and but there's no need to punch it out, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Well, when I walked in, I was very nervous, and I also thought that the people at the bar were extras, but it turns out they were actually drinking there, and they were actually real customers. And then I realized that the filming was actually going on upstairs. But once I got on set, it was amazing. Everyone made me feel really comfortable, and it went by really quickly, actually. I kind of miss it already. <laughs> also, we were shooting that scene with her at the very end of the day. Uh, it was also a long scene, and the way we wanted to run it was continuous, which you know makes it feel a little more like a stage play. For somebody who's not used to that, it can be a little overwhelming. So I think she did great, um, and it was a lot of fun. And I mean, you can see it on camera; she she does great. She has yeah. a lot of fun with uh, with our cast, and it it worked out really well. Yeah, some guys just you know feel entitled to talk to women at the bar. Unbelievable, right? Right. You know, it's these three guys, it's No Name, Eclair, Cash, all playing together. Uh, we really get a good idea of their dynamic within the show. Oh, and I think the expectation is because, you know, Eclair is adorable and he, there's reference to him being like a lover, that he's gonna get the girl. And, you know, she is interested in him. I mean, obviously, look at Michael, he's adorable, why wouldn't you be? But then he's, he's not really interested in her. And I think that's an that's a interesting change uh, I think what you expect it to go that he's gonna hit it out of the park and instead he's like that's not his style It's not how he does things, you know because of that because he decides to, to go home early and not go home with her He's, he's kind of in a way rewarded by by sitting in bed and uh, Jesse walking right into his arms So which uh, he doesn't he doesn't plan for either. Yeah, you know, he's he's just a genuine That's his whole good thing. You soul you can't chase the pitch. You got to wait for it to come to you Which is what happens. Yeah Good writing. Yeah. Nah. 
I bomb atomically. Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't define how I be dropping these mockeries. Lyrically performed armed robberies, flee with the lottery, possibly they spotted me. That a scarred show gun, explosion when my pen hits, tremendous. Ultraviolet shine, Brian Forensics. I inspect you through a future C millennium. Killer B's soul, 50 gold, 60 platinum. Shackling the masses with drastic rap tactics. All right. Yeah. That's right. Wu-Tang. It's not anything that you should f*** with. I've heard that. No one... one it, Wu Tang is nothing... It isn't anything. To f That's right. That's right. Well, there's only one way to follow that up. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm dying. <laughs> that, I felt elated after that day because um, it, was, it was a big day. We got it done. And now we're like home stretch, man. One more day, and all yeah. we gotta do is just like, if we could just get this day, we have our show. Uh, adrenaline was running high. Uh, we were feeling great, uh, but as usual, it was there was no more shooting after this. We were gonna lose the location. Yeah. We were gonna lose our time. Um, we had to push a scene or two because of what happened with Neil. So we had to make up some time on our last day. So we were going in. We were going in feeling good with with a lot to do. It's good. It feels good that we accomplished something, but I'm bummed because after today, I'm gonna, you know, probably block people like Cordion um, completely out of my life. I don't care if there's a season two, I'll still block him. I just don't like that fucking thing he's wearing. It pisses me off so much, but whatever. That's hey, another. Man. What's up? Oh, yo, buddy. What's How you up? doing? What's up? If I'll come say I'll, I'll probably really miss you after we finish. Me right? too, man. Me yeah. too. I'll miss yeah. you so much, dude. We just chill sometimes. Yeah, for sure, man. Cool. For sure. You got my Instagram going. Number yeah, stuff, got your Instagram. So we'll I'll hit you touch, up. man. 100%. Hey, right, man. Get back to your uh, interview. Peace, Peace buddy. Guys. Cheers. Have a good one. Bye. guy, man. It was our 10th day, last day in the bar. We were feeling really good because at this point we had the show, but we were also missing some key scenes that we had to get. This is our last day of shooting. We have to get this day. We yeah. don't get it, uh, the show doesn't work. There's a hole in the boat, the boat will sink. We couldn't shoot overtime either. It wasn't one of those like, well, if, if we slow down a bit, we'll just shoot overtime and we'll just spend all the money we have or what blow they, the contingency. What like they we call had. in the business a hard out. Yeah. It was a very hard out. It was a firm out. This whole shoot's been eventful for me. There's been, there's been a lot of weird things going on. I had this thing where I had this intestinal cramping going on, and there was some kind of problem, and I was in terrible pain. The, act, the call that every actor hates to make is tell the director, I have to leave. I have to go to the hospital. And uh, they couldn't have been more gracious about it. They even offered to drive me to the hospital. And uh, I'm fine now, right as rain. But uh, again, to their credit, they managed to rejig that whole day and, and, and get their day. And now we're on final day and we're gonna get this one and it's gonna be fantastic. Okay, we got here, we got the cement mixer, prairie fire, gorilla puke, and the boiler maker. Yeah, one of the shots was uh, non-alcoholic beer in a glass and then a little shot of Clamato, a little shot of that had coffee in it, a little shot that had like cream and Live lemon. lemon juice. So it was just a mixture of all these wonderful little concoctions. Yeah. And there were all there was like four shots where I had to drink all of them. It's very quick. Oh god. Yeah, it didn't it didn't mix well. But that's the moment. Chef Ben No Name have a little love interest in the Spin second season. Spin-off. Spin-off. Cho Name. Thank you. <laughs> it's a super bittersweet feeling because I think we're all like a bit uh, underslept. But team morale has been high during this whole shoot, which has been uh, such an amazing like pleasure it, it's just been a pleasure like we are so enjoying each other's company and dan has been amazing our director and our, all our crew and it's just been like freaking solid solid uh <laughs> See, we have such a good sense of humor about ourselves solid. and each other. Solid. <laughs> See, that's how tired I am. Like, just solid. And no, then you fill in the idea. blank. Choose your own adventure audience. Solid. It's been a solid. 
<laughs> Hi, my name is Emily Andrews, uh, I'm production manager extraordinaire they usually put on the call sheet for me. It's kind of special that way. Basically, it's just like helping people out, making sure problems are solved, checking locations, checking your crew, checking all different elements of the show and uh, ensuring that it's running smoothly. So you want it to go as smoothly as possible, as often as possible. And with, uh, with filming, there's always some kind of hiccup. So you have to deal with those. We've had a lot of like crazy location stories. We had someone who was very upset that we were at their location. They basically were kind of hunting for some money, which happens a lot in production. They think, oh, movies, they got lots of money. Oh, let's get some of this money. We were locked out of a location, so we were all kind of preparing outside instead. We didn't know if we ever rewrite the scenes, you know? The bar, as part of our deal, wanted to be open and functioning at certain times of the day, so yesterday we had some bar patrons um, drinking while we were shooting. Um, so that was pretty funny. Another guy was like, uh, I'm supposed to be setting the bar upstairs up. And I'm like, oh, well, we're filming there. I was like, no, but like, I usually work the upstairs bar. I was like, today you gotta work the downstairs bar. He's like, I usually work upstairs. <laughs> and I was like, not today, my friend, I'm sorry. I'm really excited to see how it comes together because I know uh, some of the actors, I've worked with some of them before, they're fantastic. And like I said, Dan and Mike, they're, they're a great group of guys and I think they deserve all the success that I'm feeling, <clears throat> feeling bittersweet. It's been 10 days. So it hasn't been too long. So I'm gonna miss everybody. I wish I could spend some more time with the cast and crew. Uh, I'm gonna miss playing the character. But hopefully we're coming back, you know, for season two. And, uh, you know, I'm just feeling good, man. You know, it's, we're on a roll already this morning. We had such a great day yesterday. And uh, I'm just excited. I'm excited to finally, like months from now, to see the product. Product, because it's it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. And uh, I'm excited for everybody to see it. Yeah. No worries, man. Do you have plans for your next uh, big project? No, no, I'm not sure what's coming up next. I am. Uh, I'm just gonna go back to training and learning as much as I can, and hopefully taking on another role. It's my first comedy, so I would love to continue doing comedy, but I would love to, you know, switch it up after this and do like a very serious drama or a thriller or something you know you never know something cool and uh yeah hopefully i'm gonna keep in touch with lots of the cast and crew and stuff like that over the next little while but yo if you're seeing this and you're a casting director holla at me i'm looking for a job bro there you go yeah that's about that that's about it right yeah right i hope you're casting a porno high with me because i'm trying to fuck on film baby <laughs> trying to get paid to fuck you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> one of those directors, hit me up. I did I did not expect that. So <laughs> hey, man. So uh <laughs> So we're just on a break right now. Um heading back up to do uh, the rest of the day, our last day and uh, it's very bittersweet. It's been so much fun working on the show and um, it's lovely, everybody, the whole cast is in today, so it's just great. When I first read these scripts, I thought they were really hilarious, like genuinely funny, and um, and it's been that way working on it. I, I think it's going to be a successful show. I, I'd be surprised if it isn't. This is the last day, and we have three super, super talented here. Oh my god. Corleone, uh, Ronnie, oh, and Cassandra. They're so um, talented. They're just background, but they put so much. They, so we've done this thing where, like, this is a show about obviously a bartender, but we've had this like, we've had these people like be in character and learn all these lines, and they're just like amazing background. It feels so yeah, real and stuff. yeah. Stop it. So people are gonna be like, what is this show about? It's this whole it new take. Like this, yeah, it's this whole. It's kind of like, yeah. like a dogma type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, yeah. Like, it's, it's the, the new. 
way that television is actually moving forward. Yeah. Not just focusing on your lead actors, but making sure the background, the background. actually have and their then, lives. And then, yeah. then the other thing is we're going to be doing this whole thing in VR. So now we've gotten one side, but now we just have to do the 360. So anyone yeah. can just live in the bar. Yeah. You yeah. can just walk up and you can just touch. touch. And, and you can just be real. a background person yeah. if you want you or, or fuck with them or whatever. Great. Just great. walk around the hood. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. It was nice um, chatting to you yeah. for yeah. meeting oh you and stuff God, for the great. first time. Bye. Bye. Maybe he'll cast us in his next thing. I think he liked us. Really? I think he liked us. I think he liked us. I think he was kind of hot. I don't know, kind of dad. But dad chic. Dad chic. <laughs> okay, so this is our um, senior executive producer, Saul. Saul Goldblist. Uh, why don't you just talk a little bit about the financing packages we put together? That's right. Yeah, my beautiful son Saul stopped by set. It was great to be reminded about, uh, you know, why why we do this. And so uh, way down in the future, uh, my son can watch the show and, and be like, it's dated and I don't get it. None of the jokes make sense and I don't get a lot of the references. And we can be like, well, you know, it wasn't, we weren't aiming for you 16 years in the future. But, but yeah, no, it was nice. It was nice, my wife and my kid and buoyed my spirits, as they say. So, I mean, he was, he was a hit. People were looking at him and he was smiling and laughing. And, you know, I always like that feeling. It, it, even though it's like cliche is when someone's like, you got such a, a cute kid. You're like, thank you. Like, oh my God, like I made him with my genes. He's part of my DNA. So that was nice to have him on set. But then I was like, get the fuck out. We got work to do. Once that Touch opens your up, head. you're going here to tag JB. And JB's going there. And then you are going to stay and talk to Andy. Got the rest of the show. Yeah. Um, oh. Went a little over time. We, we were able to shave a little off rap. We mm -hmm. got some of the, the crew rapping out a little early. Mm -hmm. and it feels then, like New Year's when you rap a show. Yeah. So it's like, and, and it's like, and that's a rap on the night that I was like, woo! It was great. It looked and felt great. So when we, yeah. when we got to call rap, it was like, Cloud nine, felt so good. I just, just like, I hope that there's not a problem with the data transfer. I'm, oh man, we lost, uh, lost a day of footage. Could have to do that scene. But no, I was like, that's it. I think it was a little later. I was like, and, and we're all to check the cards. The cards are. Oh good. yeah, and then the like the ad. So you're like looking at the call sheet for the it's day. It's like, did we get everything, did we get everything yeah, crossed yeah. out? Because you're feeling so good, and it's the last oh, yeah. one on paper. But did you oh, forget yeah. to get that insert of the pinball machine? Which we did. Yeah, <laughs> forgot to. Oh, that the I I remember thinking. The pinball machine isn't going anywhere. We can come back and get the insert on the pinball machine, which we didn't do, we didn't need. But yeah. that's it, we could do that today. Yeah, we could pinball go get it. The pinball machine is still there. Let's run a clip of a pinball machine. Uh, I do remember checking like after we wrapped, like, cause I had rewritten when we changed the order somewhat, I'd rewritten and I looked through every scene and only had it, I made sure it was crossed off, but I just remember thinking like, do I remember filming that? I was like, yeah, I remember filming it. Well, Next. we also have a, we also have a script supervisor. supervisor. Who's job? Yeah, who's, job is literally to supervise the script and make sure yeah. continuity and everything's yeah. got. So we did have that moment of like, everyone's excited. And then Mike and I pull Steph, Steph over. Like, okay, Steph. We do shot we, the whole series. Everything, like double check. She's flipping through the binders. She's like, yeah, every day is good. And then it's like, are you are you sure? 100% sure? good. She's like, yeah, we're good. We're like, okay. okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So it felt great. Yeah. She was, thank God we had a great script supervisor. Because through all this, all this rearranging and all this, we had, someone had to be on top of it. And she was always on top of it. She was great. Yeah. Unsung hero of the shoot. Sung at this point, we're singing now. Sung hero. Yeah, oversung maybe. Oh, final thoughts. What a treat. I mean, what can you say? It's been a it's been a real blast getting to meet all these fantastic people, getting to watch this team work hard, fast. I mean, we were we were catching 12, 10 pages a day, man. That's like that's big work. Um, so I feel great. A little melancholy, you know, when the project draws to a close. But I'm really excited to see what they cut together, uh, what uh, what they keep. Uh, what the. F <laughs> it was nice to meet this guy, this young actor. I hope that we'll get to work together again uh, soon. Young? Yeah. I'm about 30. Yeah, 30, right. 33. Just 30. wait till you get to the third floor. Don't rush it. Anyways, it was, it, was, it was a real honor to be a part of this thing and to help bring it to life. And I hope that it's got a... Hope bring it to... This guy was the life. I hope that it's got a bright future. Cheers. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit, to be honest, a little bit sad, for sure, because uh, we've been having such a great time. We're a little bit tired, for sure, on the 10th day, and we're all running on sugar peaks and lows with all our little um, drinking scenes today, because it's all the bar scenes. 
but yeah, no, I'm sad. I feel like uh, it's a nice team here, really great family, and I'm really happy to have met all these wonderful people. And uh, it's rare that you get this kind of feeling in a cast, and uh, everybody seems to be sharing the same feeling. So I think we're going to be bummed a little bit to uh, to say goodbye, but hopefully this is not a goodbye, and uh, we hope there will be a season two. So uh, yeah. Post production process. Our amazing editor Mika Ricks Hayes, who we've worked with a lot. Mm -hmm. He started with uh, Rough Cuts, and then from there, one of my favorite things to do is get to sit with Mika, start really shaping them, mm -hmm. figuring out what what's going to stay, what's going to go. It's like it starts as a block of marble, and you chip away, you chip away, you chip away, and eventually it turns into the day. Yeah. You know? But first, you have the big block of marble. Then you have like a giant sander, and you're just trying to get the shape of a of a thing. Then you go yeah, with, the, slightly, with the hammer, and, the, more coarse, and then you start going with the little. You, by the little end, guys, you're just buffing. You're just tiny little tweaking. sandpapers. Yeah. Um, so that that was huge, and then it was also about music, oh. music supervision. We were lucky enough to work with the Zeus Twins, who not only provided the title track but also scored the intros, which was yeah. amazing. Very rarely do you get like real scoring, and it just it's so cool. It makes the whole thing amazing. Just all the layers. We had to record some some voiceover, the announcer. And uh, yeah, it was it was a great process. We worked with real pros uh, yeah. up and down the line. Our, our post team was just like. And we did all the, the finishing, great. the color correction, and mixing at uh, Eggplant Picture and Sound. Shout out Eggplant! Woo! They were they were great, and it was you know it was a pretty tight turnaround too. We didn't have a ton of time uh, working with CBC, who've been amazing all the way through. Mm -hmm. We had we had deadlines. We needed to get them rough cuts, get notes, mm -hmm. feedback. Dan's got the vision. Like that's what that's why he's a great director, and that's why he's the director because he's the one who can see it when it's on the page. Um, that I don't have the ability to do that the same way. So, you know, that's that's why he gets paid the big bucks. You know, you don't, you know, just directors don't just grow on trees. No. You know what I mean? So, you know, and that's what Dan does is to to shepherd the vision. That's why in French, uh, director is translated to visionateur, which means realizateur. Vision, visionateur. Realizateur. Mm -mm. Maybe in Quebec, but in France. It's oh, because yeah. we're Canadian. Yeah, because we're Canadian, so. Figured we'd go to yeah. Quebec. Yeah, but French. it means like, it means like literally vision, vision maker, vision sculptor. Um, and yeah, so to the visionateur, magnifique. A la vie I'm blushing. Yeah. Are you? Here. Yeah, it's really hot in here. We're almost done. We're almost also, done. I had peanuts. That might be why you're turning red. <laughs> <laughs> it feels incredible to be putting this thing out into the world. Yeah, it's so exciting. I, am... I, hope, I hope people like it, uh, but I also am just, I'm proud of it, and I'm happy to have it out there. And uh, it feels it feels tremendous. It feels like, uh, getting, you know, it's like giving birth, but uh, without the episiotomy. I, I'm, it up. <laughs> I'm so... I'm so proud of, of the work that everyone did, uh, the entire team. And you know, you're not, you're not always lucky enough in, in this career and your life to, to get to work on something you love and to be happy with it when it's over. Mm -hmm. um, so I just feel, feel amazing. We want people to see it because we're so happy with it, proud of it. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, we tried to bring the best people we could I think we had the best cast, the best crew, and they, I think they all did their best work. And that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think it's, uh, I think the vibes behind camera transfer to the show. I think people will see the, the life in the show that we, we felt on set. So it's exciting. It's really exciting. And also people, you know, won't think I'm a bum anymore. I think people thought it was lying. I was like, oh, I'm working on a show. And they're like, oh, oh cool. Sure you are. Yeah, sure you are. So now it's like, aha, <laughs> proof. The end. Cash yeah. Hold on. There's Not just really one good. last thing. There's one last thing that I would like to Let say when I got my guys. Here's a little story that I got to tell about three bad brothers that you know so well. It started way back in history with that rock MCA, Yimmy, Mike D. Now we had a little horsey named Paul Revere. Just me and my horsey in a quart of beer. Riding across the land, kicking up sand. Got the sheriff on my tail because I'm in demand. One lonely beast, the IP. All by myself without nobody. nobody. The sun is beating down on my baseball hat. hat. The air is getting hot. The beer is getting flat. flat. Looking for a girl, I ran into a guy. God. His name was MCA. I said, how did he say that? Now we told a little story. That's it. Just verse That's one. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. Ooh.